Hey everyone, in this video we are going to talk about different types of enterprise level applications, uh, enterprise information systems that help support uh, enterprise processes. So let's get into it. All right, so in the last video we talked about um, departmental silos, uh, information silos, and how you can restructure a an organization in order to increase efficiency and get rid of some really bad problems. Now, this reorganization, I kind of hinted at it a little bit, but this process of reorganization can be a really tricky thing. Uh, so what we would probably consider this is business process re-engineering. Uh, you're taking existing processes and you're designing new processes. So you, you take an existing process and you alter it to use a new information system or you design a new business process from scratch in order to take advantage of a new information system. And this idea of integrating a whole bunch of databases into one big database in order to get rid of information silos might be one example of business process reengineering. It would be the process of making the new information system by integrating all of those databases and then restructuring all of the processes that used, used the old databases so that they can work with the new uh, database as well as any changes in software and procedures and stuff that might need to happen as a result of this new uh, information system that they're working with. So that's the idea of business process reengineering is you're updating your processes or designing new processes in order to work with new information systems. Now, as businesses fit, uh, found out the hard way with the rise of uh, computer technology and the internet and any further change in computer technology, all that kind of stuff, as they had to start uh, using new systems and start thinking about integrating those departmental silos and all that kind of stuff, this is a very difficult, slow, and expensive process, especially because these processes are so structured that um, it's very hard to make these changes. Um, people can be reluctant to make the changes. It can be hard to make all the new documentation for the new steps to get everyone trained on the new process and the new software and all that kind of stuff. It can be a really tricky thing. So business process engineering is not done willy nilly. Uh, it's done after very careful consideration and a realization that uh, after this process of re-engineering, it's going to be a lot better than before. Now, business process re-engineering can be really tricky, uh, and it can, it can be tricky to try to design new solutions, especially from scratch. It can be tricky to get everyone caught up on stuff, which is where enterprise application solutions come in in order to help businesses that are trying to uh, re-engineer their entire process and try to become more streamlined. So enterprise application solutions are software designed to support entire enterprises. So this might be payroll software, it might be sales tracking software, all that kind of stuff. This is software that supports a major organizational strategy or a major organizational process and it's something that can be uh, possibly integrated into a system. So like al altering processes to integrate the system. It might be something that comes with, uh, actually here, let me go on to this next point. It consists of the software and standardized procedures to use them. So these procedures might fit into a existing process so that that process has to be altered a little bit to fit these procedures, or it might, uh, completely replace processes and, you know, businesses may not have to uh, do a ton of work in designing new processes. They might be able to just fit this inherent process that comes with the enterprise application solution into a new process that they have to design in order to fit everything. Inherent processes, by the way, are the processes, the standardized procedures that come with enterprise application solutions. So the standardized procedures refers to the fact that 
these procedures are going to be the same for every organization that uses this particular uh, application solution. So no matter what company you are, uh, you're not going to get a custom software and you're not going to get customized uh, instructions for how to use that software. You're going to get a standardized thing and it will be the same for every other company that uses that particular software. These processes might be everything from, uh, let's say if we're talking about a payroll application, uh, how processes for how employees should use the payroll application to submit their hours or stuff like that, how HR and accounting should use it in order to verify hours worked, in order to pay out, all that kind of stuff, and how IT should set the whole system up so that everyone is able to use it. Now, one of the types of enterprise applic application solutions is the customer relationship management software. So it's a suite of applications and a database and an inherent process or a set of inherent processes uh, that helps manage interactions with a customer, uh, everything from lead generation to customer service. Every single time the customer is interacted with, uh, that contact or the transactions that a customer makes if they're buying something or anything like that, anything that the customer does to interact with a business in any capacity will be recorded in the CRM's database. So that database holds customer information and it documents all of the contacts made with a customer so that people can research and see, hey, what have we previously done with this customer and so on and so forth. Um, it's going to help manage all of the interactions so multiple people aren't reaching out to the same customer thinking that they're doing lead generation uh, for the first time. Uh, it's going to make sure that, you know, if a customer is having problems, uh, maybe they can follow up on that work or maybe sales can see, hey, they've contacted customer service a whole lot. Maybe we offer them a discount or things like that. It allows for communication between a lot of departments in a uh, business regarding that customer. And it would also solve the problem that we talked about before where a customer uh, foreclosed and then was bought out by another company and that company was is not really good at paying things and the sales department needs to know that so that they know the updated contact information and also maybe to stop doing sales pitches to that customer until the balance gets resolved or their payment is more, um, you know, they're more on top of their payments. So we have a very brief diagram right here, all the different applications interacting with the database right here. So solicitation, lead management, uh, sales applications, relationship management, uh, making sure that everything is on good standing, that the payment is in good standing, that the orders and stuff have arrived, and then customer support for actual orders. Um, all of these are interacting with the same database. So no matter what uh, department is using each one of these different applications, and all these applications might be unique to different departments, um, they all see the same information. So they're not going to have data inconsistency issues, which is really important for this type of work. Now the inherent procedures in this case are going to be how to use all of these applications right here. And maybe on the IT side, how to set up the database and the database management system or whatever that come with the uh, customer relationship management stuff. But the processes are going to be, or procedures are going to be how every uh, employee that is using these applications should actually use these applications, as well as for uh, managers and stuff, how to integrate this into the business processes in a business. Next up we have is an enterprise resource planning uh, application software. Uh, these are a suite of applications, a database, and a set of inherent processes that try to consolidate all of the business operations into one computing platform. And the idea is to forecast sales. It wants to take all of the information possible in order to forecast sales, which are then being used to, you know, will then be used to uh, create manufacturing plans and schedules in order to meet those forecasts. So it has um, a lot of the same 
ideas as a CRM, where it's collecting a lot of customer information, all the contacts with the customer and all that, because if you're contacting a customer and having really good dialogue with them, and if they're not having too many customer service issues, uh, then you might be able to say that that customer could be buying more things in the future and that could be uh, used in the forecast. So you have a whole bunch of data being fed into a database so that you can forecast sales and make sure that you have enough product on hand in order to meet those forecasted sales. Now this is going to have a lot of moving pieces right here. We have all the CRM tools, the solicitation lead and management and lead management application, the sales application, relationship management, customer support, like all that kind of stuff we've already seen before, as well as the procedures to on how to use that. But then you also have accounting to make sure uh, everything is being paid and also to help to help keep track of the orders and stuff that are being made. Uh, manufacturing applications, inventory applications, and human resources applications are all a part of this. They are all contributing data to the overall database so that the ERP programs can actually generate those forecasts, but then they're also giving data back so that you can try to meet those forecasts, whether it's um, giving data back to sales so they can try to meet those goals, giving data back to accounting to make sure that uh, you know everything is good for the budgets, for making um, enough material to meet the forecasts. Manufacturing and inventory will need that information to make sure that they are able to produce and store all of that uh, inventory for the forecasted sales and so on and so forth. Um, so the ERP database is really useful for businesses that are trying to forecast sales and make sure that they're able to meet those sales with their actual production. Now, ERP systems are intended for manufacturing, although they've been adapted to other um, other areas. So anything that needs uh, any sort of planning, uh, education and hospitals could make use of an ERP system in order to forecast demand and try to meet that kind of demand. But it's not for every company. There might be things that um, other companies might not feel that an ERP system meets their needs. And there's one other type of system that might work better for them. Now, if an ERP does not work for a company, if there is no way that they're able to get everything integrated into an ERP, or if it just doesn't fit, and yet they, they're still having the issue of information silos, if they need to fix that with uh, some sort of enterprise software, that's where enterprise application integration might come in. So this uh, suite of software applications, the idea is that they're trying to take these departmental, silo, departmental silos and connect them together using the applications that come in it. So it's going to provide layers of software to connect existing applications. It's sort of like um, if you've ever had to travel somewhere that uses a different shaped plug than the uh, standard American plug. It's like one of those adapters that you slot on top of that plug. Another example might be if you use a cable adapter to, let's say, change a, uh, to like put a USB-C uh, plug over a um, USB flash drive or something like that, or change an HDMI cable to a uh, DisplayPort cable or VGA or something like that, Th things of that nature, right? This is the software version of that. So it's providing some layer of software to connect the existing applications that the different departmental silos are using. These existing applications are now able to communicate and share data which means that the information is integrated on a, uh, not actually integrated as in it's on the same database, but it's integrated as in everyone 
can connect and access that information even though they are still fundamentally not in the same database. Uh, so you're able to leverage existing systems with minimal change to existing processes and can then allow you to gradually move to a um, ERP system because you are getting used to this idea of integration. So the structural procedures are changing very slowly in response to the fact that you're now able to access all the data from everyone else, but you don't have to completely upend the entire system at once. And then once people get used to that, get used to the EAI, then uh, it might be a more uh, suitable time to move to an ERP. So this is kind of what I mean by that layer of software, uh, is that you have this EAI interface that sits on top of the existing softwares and databases that each department is using, and it allows these possibly very different and completely separate applications to communicate with other different applications that they were never supposed to. And they're able to communicate with a server and then from that server uh, communicate with the other uh, as areas of this system. So they'll, what happens is accounting systems, let's say, will ask for um, sales data and that request will be passed to the server, which will check in this uh, metadata database right here and say, hey, where is the sales data located? The database will say it is located in the CRM system, which has all the sales info. And the server will then get that information from the CRM. The CRM, uh, through the interface, uh, it will make that request and then the CRM database will pass that back. And then it will be able to send that over to accounting systems and so on and so forth. We have actually an example path right here where CRM, you know, maybe a sale is made and it's able to transfer information over to the manufacturing system to say, hey, do we actually have this uh, number of product in stock so we can actually make that sale? But what happened was the CRM asked the server for that information. The server had to check with the metadata. The metadata has all the information on what pieces of data are stored where. So the metadata can say it's stored in the manufacturing system and the server can, through the interface, check with the manufacturing system. So you have these software layers that allow these systems to communicate with the server. And then when they make their requests, rather than making a request to just their individual database, they can make a request to the server and the server can say, this is where you can find it, and it can communicate through this interface. Now, there are challenges that come with implementing and upgrading a, an enterprise information system, um, just like there are challenges with anything, really. But there are a few that are very, um, you know, that you see a lot in this implementation and upgrading process with a enterprise information system. First is collaborative management. Um, actually, I'll go back here. There's all of these discrete uh, systems in play. Um, and even here with the uh, different departments that are all coordinating with the same database, right? Uh, there's all of these separate departments in play and there's not one department that holds uh, authority over another department. Otherwise it'd be in the same department, right? So sales doesn't have authority over manufacturing and manufacturing doesn't have authority over sales and same with all the other uh, possible pairs of departments here. So in that case, this collaborative management, it can be a little bit tricky to resolve things like um, disputes in what needs to happen when, disputes in what information needs to be shared. Uh, it can be hard to figure out that coordination if there's not one person who can say, we are doing it this way, because everyone might be uh, proposing solutions that don't work for someone. So there can be issues that way. 
Now, requirements gaps here refers to the gap between what a particular organization needs and what a an enterprise uh, system is actually able to do. Uh, these enterprise systems are standardized between many, many, many different organizations. So there will inevitably be an organization that needs something extra that an enterprise information system is not able to provide. Um, it can be tricky for an organization to try to figure out what to do with that gap in what is needed and what is actually provided. Um, it might mean altering an application. It might mean adding in something new in order to fill the gap. It might mean um, changing procedures in order to better align with this application system, which could have its own challenges, given that it's hard to change a procedure and get everyone on board with a change in procedure. Um, if a change in procedure has to be made in order to get rid of those gaps, is that better than implementing a new system to erase that gap instead, or uh, changing the application, if that's even possible, to erase that gap? Who knows? But that can be an issue. Transition problems. I mentioned it before. It can be uh, hard to adapt an existing organization to new problems. It can be hard to transition to a new system. It requires very careful planning and substantial training to try to minimize any lost time, lost value, etc. And if it's done wrong, uh, things could end up being catastrophic, but it would require an, ov an overhaul of the business processes uh, at many, many different levels in order to work with one of these uh, types of softwares. Now, it can be really hard to adapt to a new system, especially if uh, employees have really good workflows with the old system. So a change, a massive change like this, uh, has to be done very carefully. It has to be justified to employees at all levels. Um, management has to come and talk to everyone under them about why this is necessary and the ways that it's going to help them with the recognition that, yes, the um, change is going to be difficult at first, but it will benefit you and the company in a long, in a, uh, maybe after a period of time. But it's very hard to, uh, or sorry, it's very important to get employees on board with a transition to show them that it's going to be better for them at the very end. And then new technology can, in and of itself, be a risk factor, um, especially if that technology is used without being fully understood. And we talked a bit about this regarding like cloud security, right? where if data has to be very tightly controlled, it can't be uploaded to the cloud, and so on and so forth. Um, if there's security holes in a new piece of technology that aren't necessarily known until after that new technology is updated, that could be catastrophic, especially if it gets to the point where another change has to be made. So just very, very expensive, loss of wasted time, et cetera, et cetera. Um, it, is very important to um, be on top of the technological knowledge if you are someone who happens to be in charge of making a change like this, uh, a change to an enterprise application like this. If that ever is you, you have to actually do the research and if necessary, ask uh, experts in the field about it in order to really make sure you understand the technological implications of this, well, technology, of this new technology that's being used. Uh, I think a big thing for this will be understanding uh, AI, how AI is being used in systems like these, because if systems like these start using AI, 
that could open up a whole bunch of security holes in and of itself. So very, very important to be on top of. All right, well, that is a video on three uh, types of enterprise information systems. Um, these application solutions that can be used in order to uh, facilitate communication within an enterprise, uh, get rid of departmental silos, and help employees, you know, make their lives a lot easier. So that's that video. The last video for this chapter will be a very brief discussion on uh, inter-enterprise silos.